Hello and welcome to my first official Minecraft tutorial. <laughs> right, we're going to build the automated nether portal that I use in my LP series. Or something similar to it anyway. So, what you need to do is build yourself a nether portal, of course. You don't need to have the corners in if you don't want to, but I have them in for... Well, looks, but just in case, I'm going to cut the bottom out there so we have one more place to put redstone. So the first thing we're going to do is make an ignition system. This one is a special one, actually, this nether portal, because it doesn't require fire chargers to light it. So you save on materials there. You know, you save on coal, gunpowder, and, you know, all that nice stuff. So first of all, you need to put the ignition source, which is there. Okay? And what will happen is, in off state, the wall blocks, or the, the flammable block you're going to be using for the floor, or for the ignition system, I'd recommend not using flammable blocks everywhere because it will end up bad will pop up one and literally well basically what happens is the block here catches fire which ignites another portal um on the new snapshots in in hard difficulty uh fire spread has been you know unnerfed to what it used to be back in alpha so it spreads really quickly and yeah that lights up super fast now right <sighs> So, to get the ignition working, we need to go like so. Place two sticky pistons, one block underneath, underneath, you know, underneath the portal. Then place our wall blocks. Uh, back a few more blocks. We need to have our, our, uh, you know, thing to, thing to start it up. So, we're probably going to do it like this. Um, how are we going to do this? Yeah, this should work. Get this here. Uh, of course, this is all going to be on the same layer, you know, so... I guess I can do it this way. This should this should work, I think. should work quite good, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to do this off of my uh, memory, so... it's It can be awkward to do something like that especially when you're trying to record it. So that should now push that up. It should light it. But we don't want to have to stand there for ages to light it. You know, we may just want to walk in and let it light and then walk away. I mean, especially if you're not playing on hard difficulty. So what we're going to have to do is put it into a into a, uh, into a T flip flop or an RS door latch. To do that, I'm going to delete more of the floor here. This is just a quick platform I threw together, but I'm not going to need it. Right, so it's going to go into the bottom here, and we're going to try and do all the wiring back here. So we need to get this this signal, take it out here, and back here. So we're going to drag it out here. And what's going to happen is we can put it into an RS nor latch here, which will go like so. If I can remember how these work, which I'm pretty sure I do. It was like that, then like that. Okay? So once you step on the plate, it will go on. Then, once we, and once it's on, we will detect the portal with a bud switch and turn it off. Right? So when the power goes in, it's going to stay up. Using this simple RS nor latch, which is like so. It's blocks like this, in a, in a shape like so. Torch under there. Then redstone wire on top, torch, and then another wire here. And that, yeah. And you can put inputs into a few different places. Right. There's our first little bit done. We've got that. So now we need a way of uh, detecting the reset. So I'll leave this button on here for a second so I can manually reset it. So what we need to do is simple. We need to make a block update detector switch by placing pistons there. This will detect the fire that's created in one of these blocks and you know the creation of the portal and then we'll send a block update out to to fire it or to revert this and to drop the floor down. So it's a simple thing. So what we need to do is that. Uh, we need a pistons, two pistons with a block on the end of it. You do not need to build this out of iron blocks. It's just something that isn't flammable that I can build with. 
uh, and you want to put a block there with wire so when these come out they will turn this wire on we'll go out this side just for ease you need to put a torch there on a on top of a block and then another block on top of the torch go outside of here so now you have this shape uh, this powers this which will go up here and actually power this this needs to be on for it to be a bud switch so now we do this here and that there and we go like so I actually think I need this here I'm not super sure no I, I've it's a possibility I've forgotten already how to make this <laughs> I'm brilliant but yeah, the, these actually need to be oh uh, it's gonna have to be like that isn't it yeah these here actually need to be there but they won't get toggled by that I don't think or well, they shouldn't actually right uh, yep that works but not as we wanted it to this is now a bud switch but it's a clock it's a clock bud switch uh, we need to put some delay onto it which means we might need to make this rear end back the, the rear end here quicker oh that was quick <laughs> um right so as you can see it detected that and now it's working All right you can see now the the buzz switch goes block extends onto this torch which puts power through it onto the wire it goes up into this into here gets delayed so that you know it, yeah in fact we don't need this here just a uh, might you know save you a bit of materials uh, that will then power that for us now I'm, I'm going off the design I've done in my single player world it may have possibly changed so that it will detect both blocks now you saw that look oh whoops <laughs> um I keep something treading on that you saw that there right watch what happens when I like one side that piston detects and if I like this side that piston detects let's get rid of the rain go away <laughs> so yeah as you know it's detecting the fire so we need it on both sides wait yes it is detecting it all right so what we need to do now is reset this uh, we need to put a signal in to the top so we can do that simply by doing this get this out here up into here get rid of those because we don't need them wire here and then we put a repeater here all right so now watch what happens oh wrong one we step onto here we fall off you know that's supposed to happen this should light and now it goes down because what's happened is this got turned on by the, the bud switch and turned off our uh, what well, powered this wire when it was off in its off state and turned it on so now we have a working uh, well the working part is our turn on slash turn off and now we need to do a neat little thing that Doc M showed me or I, I got off a Doc M video I believe it's like this we put a redstone wire here we're only going to use one of these uh, dispensers but I put two there just for decoration you can just use one if you don't want to use two you know you can just have your backing wall there doesn't matter I put two for decoration just so it looks symmetrical what we need to do is we need to place a redstone wire uh, behind this top block here okay and then a repeater on four ticks of delay now if I'm not mistaken which I probably am this should work I have no idea why but what happens is uh, you turn this on with a with a button and that did you I don't know if you heard it but it ticks twice because it sends a block update to that to the dispenser at four ticks delay which what will happen when we get our bucket of water and place it inside that will happen and we'll turn off the dispen the you know turn off the portal right so let's light it shall we so we light it excellent it's on and then we've just returned from the nether um, I think to be honest you should probably make that a button 
and you hit this button here and it turns it all off. Now, sometimes that happens. I don't actually know why that happens, but I think it's because the uh, the dispenser is getting a block update from somewhere else. Um, it's a possibility that it's getting updated from this. So what you need to do, what you'll probably need to do now is put more delay on it. Uh, let's give it one more shot, shall we? It might just be a once in a while thing, because it doesn't happen all the time for me. I mean, it does happen sometimes in my single player world. Right. Walk in, turn it on. Turn it off. Yeah, it's, it's getting an update from uh, another source, right. To fix this, this was not planned, I swear. <laughs> um, I'm literally doing, um, well, I'm doing a new design, a kind of a, a more compact design than what I have done down, and the one I've got down here, which is currently being uh, possessed by slimes. This is what, what I've done before. You know, it's a much, much different design, and it's, it's horrific. But... Yeah, you can see. I get the power to switch it off from down here. If the slime would move. <laughs> to break it, it goes from there. If you know. It goes all the way along here and up here. Um, How much delay do I have on this? I have quite a lot. I've got uh, four more ticks of delay that I need to put on the bottom. Which should solve it for us. So, if you're following me block by block, I apologise. But a simple fix would be just to go like that. No, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> again. Um, right, uh, break this, break this. Put one more block here. Put a repeater on four ticks delay there. Put that back there. Get yourself the redstone torch that you just got from the top again. Put that there. Put another block here, another block on top, and a wire. And that should now work. Oh, <laughs> wow. If it, you know, had the uh, bucket of water in. Right. Opens up. Turns on. Turns off. Perfect! <laughs> we'll get it eventually. Right. So, let's do this one more, one more quickly over and how, a quick explanation of how it works. So, you're stepping on the pressure plate here, which I'm actually going to change to a button by popping a button here and putting, any, putting the input into this line. Uh... It needs to go into this line here, or anything along this line you can put an input into. So, for for example, we could put the input right here. Uh, if we put a block under there. Whoops. <laughs> like so. And now you have it joined up. So you'd hit the open the portal button. It hits this RS null latch here. And pushes the wall blocks up. It happened way too quickly. Which causes the fire to spread onto that wall and light it up. Uh, that then sends a bud switch, uh, you know, it toggles a bud switch, which turns off this nor latch here and drops the wall down again so you can, you know, easily walk through. Then to turn it off, you're pushing this button here, which is pulsing this dispenser on, and then at a four ticks delay, it's sending another redstone update which is pulsing it again. Dispensers work very weirdly, which is picking the bucket of water back up super quickly, so you get this tiny stream, which uh, the water being placed in the portal will break it and turn it off. So there you go, and there you have it. A fully automated, uh, or toggleable nether portal that does not require any fire charges. I hope you enjoy, and uh, please feel free to, fr free to mess around with it. And yeah, if you want to see some more random redstone tutorials that I can think of doing, uh, please feel free to subscribe and if you like the video, which you probably don't because I blabbered on for ages, go and take a look at my LP series. Thanks guys and I'll see you again.